Hi. I have a story about the Revolutionary War and George Washington. Now, if you remember, George Washington's having a birthday on February 22nd, and he was our first president of the United States. This story takes place, though, before he was our first president when he was a general and fought in the Revolutionary War. It is about a person that is kind of a legend. Her name is Molly Pitcher. Her real name is Molly Hayes McCauley. And she is kind of like a legend, I think. And the person that published this story about her was actually George Washington's step-grandchild named George Washington Park Custis. He published his memories of his grandmother's famous husband in the late 1820s. Whether the stories of Molly Pitcher are actually about Molly Hayes Macaulay remains to be seen. Historians now believe that the contributions of many women during the Revolutionary War combined to create the Molly Pitcher legend. In any case, the story of Molly Pitcher will always be a tribute to women who are strong, capable, and brave. I'm going to share this screen with you. This took place way back in the 1700s, 1777, I believe. So that's back when they didn't have cameras too, by the way. So this is it a story that's been retold by Larry Dane Bremner and illustrated by Patrick Gerard. Molly Pitcher is a legendary name, preparing for war. Remember, this is about the Revolutionary War. Mary Hayes, who some called Molly, looked around the army camp at Valley Forge, Pennsylvania. Snow was deep that winter of 1777 to 1778. General George Washington's ragtag troops had no warm clothes and very little food. Many were sick. They looked more like worn out ragamuffins than soldiers. In truth, most of the men in camp that night were not soldiers at all. They were shopkeepers and merchants and farmers. They were used to being in forests to track and hunt deer, not an enemy army. Like Molly's husband, William, these men were just doing their part in the fight to free the American colonies from the King of England. Washington's men did not know how to fight like soldiers in an open battlefield, and that's what they knew they'd soon be doing. Many of them deserted and returned home rather than go up against the well-trained British soldiers. Even so, Washington vowed to turn his remaining men into first-rate soldiers. He asked Baron Frederick Wilhelm Augustus von Steuben to help. Baron von Steuben had been an officer in the Prussian army. Somehow, von Steuben did what Washington asked him to do in a matter of a few months. He turned these shopkeepers, merchants, and farmers into soldiers. Any general would have been proud to command them. When it was time for the troops to move on, William Hayes was with them. But what about Molly? She walked along, not far behind. Molly wasn't alone. As she trudged along with the troops, many women and children joined their loved ones in Washington's army and the British army too. Molly and the other women took care of the sick, washed clothes and cooked. They even joined their men on the battlefield. But more about that later. Some of the wives just came for short visits. Others, like Molly, stayed for months and months. Think about this. Some women and children had nowhere else to go. Doing what she could, 
That June morning of 1778 was hotter than the blazes in Momo's courthouse, New Jersey. Some said it was as hot as a blacksmith's forge. The weather didn't stop the American troops under the command of General Charles Lee from firing on the British. No siree. With sounds of war all around her, Molly wondered how she could best help the American cause. When one of the brave soldiers went down, exhausted from the heat, she spied her old pewter pitcher. It was then that Molly knew what she could do. What do you think? You think he's thirsty? As quick as a cricket, she snatched up the old pitcher and raced lickety-split to a nearby spring. She filled her pitcher full of cool water and dashed back to the fighting. Molly gave the water to the exhausted soldier. His thirst quenched. The soldier picked up his musket, loaded it, and started fighting again. You might think that Molly returned to the safety of camp after that, but you'd be wrong. Before she'd even finished giving water to the first soldier, another one hollered, Molly, pitcher. Molly did what she was asked, carrying the pitcher of water to other soldiers. That's how it went the rest of the morning. Molly, pitcher, men chorused all across the battlefield. Molly kept running, fetching water for American soldiers. British marched into battle, already sweating in their heavy wool uniforms and black fur hats. As the day grew hotter, those British soldiers who weren't wounded or killed began falling left and right like plants that had gone too long without rain. Even as they fell, however, scores of other soldiers took their places. There were so many British soldiers, in fact, that some of the Americans began to get skittish. They deserted their positions and hightailed it to safe, safer parts. General Lee gave the order to retreat, but those soldiers who remained on the battlefield ignored his order. They held their positions. They continued to fight, so Molly kept doing her job, too, toting water to them. After that, Everyone just naturally called her Molly Pitcher. Molly fights a battle. The battle waged on in the heat of the day. Smoke and the smell of gunpowder filled the air. Nothing seemed to stop Molly. Trip after trip, Pitcher after pitcher, she carried water that slaked the thirst of American soldiers and made it possible for them to continue their fight for freedom. Molly not only gave water to the, to the wary, but she also was quick to tend to the wounded. On one water trip, she passed a down soldier who needed help. Molly didn't stop to think about her own safety. Even though musket balls were whizzing all around her, the soldier needed help. She heaved him onto her back and carried him to a shady spot out of harm's way. After she tended his wound, she picked up her pitcher again. Much to Molly's horror, she saw her husband, William, fall wounded next to his cannon. The, the rest of the cannon's crew was too exhausted to go on fighting. Molly didn't dare let the cannon stand idle. She fired it herself. One by one, the soldiers noticed Molly at the cannon, and when they did, they stopped calling Molly Pitcher. She was a soldier now. Molly kept their cannon roaring, and the British weren't too happy about it. 
son decided to fire back at her. One musket ball came flying low right at her. Molly spread her legs wide. The ball missed Molly, but it did make quite a hole in her skirt and petticoat. Molly kept at it, plunging the rammer staff into the cannon again and again. She kept that cannon ringing until the close of battle that day. That's amazing. As darkness fell, the fighting stopped. It was time to rest and prepare for the next day's fighting. Back at camp, General Washington asked to meet the able woman he'd noticed firing a cannon in the thick of battle. He told her that for her bravery under heavy fire, she'd earned the rank of a sergeant. The next morning, the American soldiers rallied before dawn. They were ready to pick up the fighting where they left off the day before. Sergeant Molly took her post at William's cannon and prepared to fire the big gun. To everyone's surprise, the British had broken camp during the night and sneaked away. The battle was over. So here's a little bit about the real Molly Pitcher. Mary, or Molly Hayes McCauley, was a real woman. By the time the Revolutionary War fighting ended in 1781, Molly and her husband, William Hayes, had settled in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. Molly worked as a cleaning lady and laundress. After William died in 1786, she married John McCauley. 1822, the Pennsylvania State Legislature voted to give her a pension for her service during the war. Molly McCauley died on January 26, 1832, and is buried in Carlisle, where a monument to her wartime bravery stands at her gravesite. In honor of Mary Hayes McCauley, the United States Field Artillery Association of Fort Sill, Oklahoma, awards a medal to women who exhibit Molly Pitcher's spirit of sacrifice and devotion. The medal is called the Artillery Order of Molly Pitcher, the source of the story about Molly at the Battle of Monmouth Courthouse is George Washington's step-grandchild named George Washington Park Custis, who published his memories of his step-grandfather in the late 1820s. Whether the stories are actually about Molly Hayes Macaulay remains to be seen. And like we were saying, historians now believe that the contributions of many women during the revolution combined to create the Molly Pitcher legend. In any case, the story of Molly Pitcher will always be a tribute to women who are strong, capable, and brave. All right, I hope you enjoyed that story. It's a little bit about the Revolutionary War, which was way before your time, but it is how we became a country. And when George Washington, our first president, was a general. <laughs>